Welcome to Real Physics. This is a series of short clips about artificial intelligence and physics and today I want to talk about fundamental physics and math. By the way, I have nothing fundamental to announce here. It's just that I would like to share about some of my thoughts, how to proceed in that direction. And I also guess this is the hardest part where artificial intelligence could achieve something. Now, well, first of all, I have the philosophy, let's say, that yes, indeed, fundamental physics has something to do with advanced math. I like very much the uh, thoughts of Rowan William Hamilton, who in 1843 discovered the Quaternions, and he, was, he believed, he was convinced that these Quaternions, or the unit sphere, if you want, have a very fundamental uh, meaning in physics. So how could artificial intelligence potentially contribute in this field? I think uh, the basic difficulty is that, of course, computers are very smart and very efficient and can compu do computations at incredible speed if, if you look at additions or multiplications. But you have to teach somehow math in a human way to them. That means I would start to try yeah, let a network learn addition as you tell it to, as you teach it to an elementary school. So just learn from examples, two plus three is five and so on. So multiplication also should be very straightforward. And I don't know, I think the, the hard part comes here when you, when you see these generalized concepts such as a field in mathematics, you have addition and you have multiplication, you have a neutral element. Uh, of, of both operations and you have certain laws that has to be followed. Altogether, this is the question how to do reasonable mathematics or, or what do you need for doing reasonable mathematics. So you arrive at the uh, mathematicians arrived at the concept of the field. So I don't know how this general thought could be introduced or really appreciated by artificial intelligence. And then if you go to a more abstract level, say, okay, we have these field properties, you realize that, oh, there's not only the real numbers, you have complex numbers and you can define it in a very surprising way that you have a reasonable way of carrying out multiplications. And uh, then you have these other very famous field and uh, once one step more, that was the way Hamilton arrived at his reasoning. He, he spent 10 years thinking if there, were a three, if there was a, a three-dimensional field and it's impossible. And he eventually arrived at the insight that yes, if you have a four-dimensional structure, such as the unit sphere in three dimensions, or, or uh, the unit sphere in three dimensions is, is uh, again three-dimensional because it's normalized to one, but in general uh, quaternions are four-dimensional, and you can define a reasonable in a reasonable way that kind of multiplication. Technically, it's not a field anymore; it's just a division algebra because it does not commute. But that's also what makes the thing interesting. So, I mean, the problem is, I guess, how to teach that kind of curiosity to go to higher dimensions and at the same time preserve something that it's reasonable or keep operations working that are uh, just useful. And uh, what I noted uh, and what I find particularly intriguing is that you, you start out from a, from a very abstract level saying that I want to define multiplication and then you have complex numbers, but now you have this intuitive rotation of multiplications. And that's what, what I guess uh, it, it's something typically for the human mind that, uh, to appreciate this intuitive approach. Rotations are related to multiplications and even more, the more dimensions you add, if you go then to quaternions, you have another complication, but also something very intuitive. I made a video about that. If you visualize quaternion multiplications with the stereographic projection, projections, Ben Eater did, did fantastic videos about that. Then you realize that, yes, uh, this kind of quaternion multiplication also has a new 
intuitive characteristic. It introduces a twist, if you want, or a screw sense. And uh, that's something that eases very much uh, understanding, I guess, for the human brain. But I don't know if um, how or if a computer could appreciate this. This is not to say a computer cannot do it. It's just something very, yeah, I, I guess we are entering the hard part here of, of uh, research on a fundamental level. On the other hand, uh, you have to realize that why did the human brain, after all, develop all this, well, advanced mathematics, which is beautiful, because our strength is reasoning in three dimensions. And wherever we, we can use our three-dimensional intuition, be it in vector analysis or differential uh, geometry, we have sufficiently advanced uh, mathematics. Well, people, <laughs> real mathematicians also used to do calculations in much more dimensions, but I think that we are lacking um, a part of our, yeah, maybe the best part of our human intelligence. Uh, on the other hand, a computer is not limited to the to these examples in three dimensions and possibly could even do more easily or discover more easily concepts also in higher dimensions with which have an intuitive meaning that could eventually be projected back into reality into describing the physical reality but I'm not sure yeah well um it's something very interesting, something very relevant. I don't think there is a principal hurdle that AI cannot overcome in the future. So uh, this is exciting times. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you're interested in fundamental physics, subscribe to this channel.